for nearly seven decades, and especially for the last 40 years since we have incorporated as a community health board serving Bloomington, Richfield, and Edina, this office at Bloomington Public Health has made sure that our community stays strong and healthy. And so today on the Verbrugge View, we're gonna go inside and learn a little bit about uh, what they do and also talk about some current events that are important to the community. So why don't you come along as we go meet our public health staff in this week's Verbrugge View. I am here with Bonnie Paulson, Bloomington's Public Health Administrator, and the first thing we want to talk about is news you may have seen about an outbreak of measles in the Twin Cities metro region. Now, the Bloomington Public Health Division works cooperatively with other public health agencies in the metro area, and so our staff has been activated and is working very hard to address the measles outbreak, not just in Bloomington, but in other cities as well. So Bonnie, why don't you tell us a little bit about how the outbreak is affecting the Bloomington area? Um, right now we don't have any active cases right in Bloomington. There are a couple over in Richfield and because we work cooperatively with Bloomington, Edina and Richfield, um, we are working with Richfield um, to cover those cases. But we're also working very closely with Hennepin County and the Minnesota Department of Health um, to make sure that we are aware of what's happening in our local area um, and also making sure that we um, kind of cover what we need to do for our local residents. And for our residents uh, who may be concerned about exposure, uh, talk about the vaccination uh, history, the type of vaccination, and the risk to somebody who is or is not vaccinated. So measles is a very contagious disease and um, it's been, we've had a vaccine for it since like the early 60s. Um, so a lot of people have gotten it, but there are some people who have chosen not to get it and that makes them susceptible to this, vac uh, to this disease. Um, because it is airborne and can be um, passed just in walking past someone who's shedding the virus, it's important to have that vaccine to make sure that we're covered and we are immune to it. Um, we don't know if somebody has it um, because they can be shedding the virus four days before they even broke out in the rash and up to four days afterwards. So sometimes we don't know that somebody's shedding it until um, after we've been exposed. And I think that's kind of what some of the work has been with this outbreak. Once we know a child has the measles, by that time they have may exposed many people um, either in their surroundings or in passing when they've been out and about. And if people have questions about uh, the measles outbreak and concerns about it, should they call public health or sh who else should they call? They definitely can call us here at Public Health, but there's lots of resources on the website if you wanna go to the Minnesota Department of Health. We have stuff on our website also. Um, a lot of those links go to the Minnesota Department of Health and then also the CDC, the Center for Disease Control also has resources. Responding to diseases in the community is just one of the things that public Public Health does. Uh, they do many, many more things. So now we're going to wander down the hall and check out the work that we do for family health. Come along. I'm here with Abby Flegel, one of our public health nurses. Abby works in our division that does home visits for childhood development. So Abby, you want to talk a little bit about what you do when you go out to serve our constituents? Yeah, so I'm a public health nurse. Um, we work in Bloomington, Edina, and Richfield to serve parenting, pregnant and parenting families. Um, most of the families that I work with are young and they're new parents. So one of the programs that I do is called Healthy Families America, and it's an evidence-based um, home visiting program that uses a curriculum that I have right here actually to kind of guide how we do our visits. So the evidence-based approach uh, was an important part of our accreditation. So it's a real systemic way of how we address these issues with a lot of um, research behind it, yes. right? So what are some of the things that you do when you go into the home? So today I brought um, just a couple things to show you. And the first one is my bubble brains. And these are a tool that we use to talk with new parents about child development, specifically brain development. So I'm gonna have you take a hold of these. I have to handle them gently. Yes, right? yes. Careful with my brains. Right. Um, they're very fragile, as you can see. <laughs> so make some observations. What do you notice about the differences between those two? Well, I notice that one is larger than the other. Uh, one seems to have maybe neural pathways that uh, yes. are more obvious than others. Yep. And uh, one is a little bit heavier than the other. So. Exactly. This one is supposed to represent a newborn brain. 
Um, and a lot of people think that newborns come out as a blank slate, um, but they really don't. They have all the raw materials right here um, that we have in our adult brains. So it's, they're born with the same amount of cells, actually more cells because we lose some in that pruning process as we grow. I lost a few in college. <laughs> <laughs> I think I did too. So you can take a look at the newborn brain. It's quite light. There are some connections there. Um, we'll call this the activity center for feeding um, hunger cues. Over here will be kind of communication. Um, language skills aren't really developed at all in a newborn. And maybe over here um, we'll say gross motor. Quite small still that develops into this brain. Yes, so in your, in your hands there you have the three-year-old brain, which is quite active, lots of connections, lots of things happening there. You can see the gross motor um, activity center is much larger now. We'll say self-regulation is here, it's still pretty small, and that's why you get those tantrums um, during the toddler years. But overall, you can tell that the brain um, has all of these healthy connections. It's lit up, it's colorful, there's lots of good things happening there. So obviously you talk to them about what is important in developing from this brain to this brain, and I'm guessing that this has something to do with the brain development. It does, it does. So I always tell parents that um, there's a lot of things marketed to parents to make them think um, that they can use these products to get their babies to be smarter and healthier and ultimately it's not putting them in front of a screen, it's not um, some fancy expensive toy that you can use to get this brain development, it's you as a parent and that parent-child interaction that happens. One of the most important parts of that is reading to your kiddo. Of course, we'll set them up for um, academic success later on. So thank you, Abby. For yeah sharing with us what you do to help <laughs> so build welcome. strong families in the cities of Bloomington and Richfield and Edina. Now we're going to step outside and get some tips for this summer for protection from the sun and other environmental factors. Thank you. You're welcome. It's a little bit wet outside. We're not going to be able to do anything in the sun, but we can still talk about a really important talk topic. So let's go meet Nick Kelly, our Deputy Administrator of Public Health. So Nick is going to talk to us about some of the things that you'll encounter when you go outside this spring and summer and how you can safeguard against some of those things that are less healthy for you. So let's start with sun protection. When you go out on a sunny day, what do you need to do to protect yourself, Nick? So before you go outside and enjoy the nice sunny day, uh, put sunscreen on about 15 minutes before you start going outside. Um, typically we recommend SPSF 15 at the minimum. Um, you need to reapply it every two hours for when you're outside or if you're getting really, really sweaty or swimming in uh, the pool or outdoor in a lake and you're drying yourself off, you need to reapply sunscreen after you do that. And uh, hats, glasses, always advisable in addition to sunscreen. Absolutely. Everybody looks great in hats and sunglasses. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, later in the day when the sun starts to recede, uh, we have uh, little, uh, little uh, annoyances that come out, right. mosquitoes primarily. So uh, mosquitoes and ticks are the two biggest things we worry about. So ticks uh, and some mosquito species you can get pretty much any time during the day, but it's most often at dawn or dusk. Okay. Um, same thing with ticks is it's DEET. It's putting on some DEET, uh, 20 to 30 percent is what we recommend, uh, especially around uh, the ankles and the feet for uh, minimizing tick exposure and then an exposed skin for mosquitoes. Aside from being annoying and getting an irritation when you actually get bit, they can carry diseases. So uh, Zika has been in the news lately, uh, mostly down in uh, the southern part of the United States and uh, the Caribbean and South America. Thankfully, the mosquito species that transmit Zika does not live in Minnesota. We have this nice thing called winter. Um, they don't survive. They can't reproduce here. So with the uh, uh ticks, the Lyme's disease, what are some of the indicators that people, some of the symptoms that they could look for? So you'd see a bullseye. Um, after you get bit, um, you never want to squeeze the tick. Um, you want to kind of flick it off. Um, they'll tend to get back off safely. The, you don't want to break off. The mouth is the part that's actually uh, embedded in your skin when the tick bites you, and you don't want to leave that behind. Well, we always encourage people to get outside to lead a healthy lifestyle. 
and an important part of that lifestyle is taking the appropriate precautions so it's not just the activities that you engage in but it's making sure that you don't allow the environment to affect you as well. That's it for this week. Thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next week on Verbrugge View.